Well, hi everybody, Lisa Tamadi here from Pushing the Limits and welcome once again. It's fantastic to have you and today I've got my wingman again, Neil Wagstaff with me and my little cat here, Bailey. Can you see hey. it? So, <laughs> <laughs> so today we're going to be talking about what are the current factors limiting your, your growth and your success. So Neil, tell us a little bit about what the subject is and how we're gonna approach this today. So you, you and I have been obviously, as, as you know, chatting a lot lately, Lisa, on you know, goal setting and around goal setting and around visualization and how important it is. But one of the things that, we, that came out of our discussion that we felt was really worth talking about is we don't often look at the things that are limiting us. We look at the positive things, the things we want to do, the goals that we want to put in place. We don't look at the things that are slowing us down. So what, what we're going to encourage you guys and girls to do today and share a bit of our own stories as well is have really take the time to sit down and have a look at your own story. Mm -hmm. Have a look at journaling your own story. Do as Lisa and I did and share your story with each other. Have a look at what cards you were dealt. Have a look at, for example, you may have been bullied as a child. You may have been bullied at work. Do you feel insecure about something? You could be in a position that you, um, you've had such a great upbringing, you've had a good upbringing with loads of money, loads of comforts, loads of everything you need. And for that reason, anytime you find yourself in a situation where you've got to struggle, you just don't know how to cope with it. And you, don't know what to, you don't know what to do. So once you work out what those limiting things are, often these things become reasons that we don't go on and reach our full potential. Yep. And as you all know, we're about getting the most out of ourselves mentally, physically and getting the most out of our, our bodies and really reaching our full potential. Mm -hmm. Now, if these things are stuff that's st stopping you doing what you want to do every day, then we've got to work out how to first identify what they are and then work out a strategy to overcome them. Yeah. So there's a, there's a statistic and you know what statistics are like, but that most people are operating at about 40% of their maximum potential. And, and I would say that that's probably about right. You know, we might feel like we're stretched and we're, we're, we're overstressed and things, but as far as what we could be actually doing in our lives, we're not really going for broke and really achieving what we never, what we, you know, what we really want. Um, so if we want to lift that 40% and we want to overcome a whole lot of things and we want to actually live a life that has meaning, that has impact in the world, that is a positive so that when I get to the end of my days, hopefully way in the future, I can look back and go, wow, you know, I did. I made a massive impact in the world. I did the things that I wanted to do. I didn't live half pie. And I think this, this is about going all in. This is about becoming this person who is committed to whatever they, they're set out to do. Um, and we're going to talk today a little bit about getting outside your comfort zones and pushing the limits and finding out what you're made of. Now, one of the reasons why in the past, you know, I've done lots of ultra marathons, obviously. And one of the beautiful things about when you do really big, scary, humongous challenges, and these could be anything in life. Um, but we'll take the example of the ultra marathons. You find out just who the hell you are, because it's not, always pleasant it can be horrific it can be torture it can be really really hard but there are massive learnings that go on when you're pushed outside your comfort zone and you discover who you are as a character and how much you can fight and how much you can overcome i remember 100k run with you neil what did that teach you we did 100k together at the nationals and we both had our demons on that day that we had to fight through, me with an injury, and then you later on, you know, this was your first hundred. Tell us what that experience taught you. I went to places that I didn't know I was able to. Yep. And it allowed me to work out, firstly, I needed to dig really deep. I could have taken the easy option and just stopped the, mm -hmm. when, I, when I went into it with you. Anything we knew that any, time, any K past the marathon was further than I'd ever run. Mm. and you'd said to me from the start if you get past the marathon that's fine stop whenever you want I could have done that I had an easy out all the way around decided not to had to dig deep to do it but what that's taught me since is in my family life my business life every other aspect of my life I now know that there's part of me that I didn't know I could access yeah a deeper part a part that when the going gets tough I've now I can understand both from a mental and um, psychological and physiological point of view that I've got more to give because I gave more on that day. That event has taught me a huge amount and I can now push that a little bit harder. So that now applies to me in business, it applies to me in family. I used a lot of things that could have been as a, a negative, the stuff for the, you know, when I was growing up, family things, that they motivated me through. 
they yeah. took me through. I remember my my old man telling me when I was probably about 12 or 13 years old that he um, he sat down with me, showed me a picture of a load of guys in the military. Now I was never ever going to go into the military, and he was he was adamant that I should go into the military. And he showed me a picture of um, some Scots guards. He was in the Scots guards and said, "Look, son, you could this could be you." I said, like, "Hang on a minute." I don't want that to be me. At that point, it upset me quite a lot. And given time, I overcame it with the people and support from family and friends around me. But during that run, I was now becoming a new person. As yeah. I grew up, I was becoming a new person. So I'd taken that, what could have been a negative thing, turned it round. It could have been a limiting factor. But for me, that now drives me hard because I want to become my own person. I want to be that person. I definitely don't want to be the guy in the military, but I know who I am now and who I want to be. Yeah, you didn't want to follow what your dad wanted and that yeah. caused a whole lot of conflict and you had, you know, shit to deal with and he wasn't the greatest. Um, and, and we all have backstories. Each and every one of us has had shit happen to us in life. And this is where the power of understanding your story and this is where journaling comes in, writing it down, also sharing it, you know, with a friend or a trusted person that you can tell everything to. Because when you do that, you get outside of yourself and you actually get to look at what's gone on and then it takes away the power that those experiences often have over you when they're not expressed, when they're hidden, when they're kept in the dark places. And when we actually dig into them and we actually look at them face on and we go, you know, uh, the shit that happened in my early childhood years, there were some, you know, horrible things that happened and, and when I, it definitely influenced who I was as a young adult and who I, um, you know, who I became and when I look back over that I can start now as a as an adult who's mature who's like able to look at things in the square in the face and the power is gone from those memories I can understand intellectually what would happen if we don't express them we stay as that little kid or that young person in that situation with the emotions attached as they are then and we can't grow out of them and this is when when by journaling things and actually looking at the limiting factors that we've built into our psyche, you know, um, the Can you imagine how much that would make you, how much that could stop you doing though in life. Oh. And that's the bit I really want to just make sure that everyone listening is getting is those things with the examples you used there, Lisa, when you were growing up, I've chuckled at the amount of times that you've used as your motivation that I'm going to do this because so-and-so said I shouldn't or so-and-so said I can't. And I'm going to, I'm going to show them how it's, how it's done. So you've taken it, flipped it into, into a positive. But there's so many things, so many people um, that I often speak to on a, on a daily basis that are just uh, sitting there with untapped potential because there's something that is limiting them that really doesn't need to anymore. Yeah. So by identifying what those things are, and it can be, as, as you said, it can be an emotional process going through it, but it's worth taking the time to find out what they are because what you, once you identify them, they're yeah. often not as big as you thought they were. You, as you say, you journal them, you get them down on paper, share them with friends, and all of a sudden you've got solutions and the doors just go wide open and you see a whole world that you you definitely wouldn't have wouldn't have seen before yeah i mean i've used this example before but um mum when she was a little girl at school um got up on stage to do a school speech as we all had to do when we were kids and she froze on stage and it was horrendously embarrassing for her as a eight or nine year old whatever she was and then from there on in she never ever spoke again in a public forum. She was a teacher, she could teach you know, children because that was different, but in a, in a public forum, she would never get up and speak. It was a limiting belief because she would have been a fantastic speaker, you know, with, with her stories and the knowledge that she had. But she'd held herself back, she'd always kept herself out of the limelight, etc. When she had her aneurysm, which everybody knows that story, all those past memories were, the power of them were gone and that limiting belief was no longer there and now she'll get up on stage. She was up on stage with me a, a couple of weeks ago in front of 500 doctors or so, you know, talking at a conference, telling them her story and she couldn't I, give it I love it. You know, I love it. and that, that is like the, when you take the power of that memory from that eight-year-old is now gone because that part of her is gone, <laughs> literally, um, that, that power is gone and now she can do whatever she likes in that, in that field, in that arena, because she understands, you know, or she actually doesn't have those emotions anymore in, the, in regards to that event. Um, and these can be negative drivers, you know, these can be things, you know, like 
wanting to prove somebody wrong because someone told you that you couldn't do it. I mean, that's definitely been a driving force in my entire life. And you can see that as being a negative or wanting to prove something. Yeah, but geez, it makes you real powerful. <laughs> it makes you yeah, so you're powerful. You're a great example of that. You've got a fair few things ticked off as a result of being driven by what other people said you shouldn't. Very much so. And um, it's better, you know, like we just have to overcome these things and talk, you know, so by by understanding them, looking at them and going, okay, that's not who I am anymore. And I'm deciding I'm taking on a new identity. I'm taking on new challenges and then going through that process. And yes, in these challenges that you're going to go through, there are going to be some deep, dark times. It's not going to be easy, but this world isn't about being easy. No? There's a great book that you're reading at the moment. Hey? Um, and it talks about this sort of stuff. Tell us a little bit about that. So, yeah, that's, um, and obviously those listening from the running world will, well, if you haven't read it, you should. It's, it's up on a pile with your books, Lisa. But David, um, David Goggins. Um, so he's got, he's got a few books out. And, and um, the, one, the one I'm reading at the moment has got some great lessons in mental toughness in it and some great, great stories. And he brings it to life very well with his own personal stories. He's, he digs deeper. Again, he's on a pile with you with how the the deep he's willing to go to, oh, to he's achieve waiting. He's waiting and, get, and get stuff and get stuff and get stuff done yeah. um but it, it's it's again looking at looking for inspiration in those around you and that can come from friends it can come from family it can come from people you may not have met like in my case it's um you know listening to what david goggins has done how he's done it and what he's achieving great great lessons but what yeah. i want if we if we can leave everyone to think about these is have a look at something you want to currently be doing it might be changing job it might be starting your own business it could be entering an event it could be entering a run it could be doing an ultra marathon it could be going to ask someone out that you've been looking at for a little while and thinking i uh, i'd love to take them out for a date any number of things there's a and there'd be limiting factors that, you, that are stopping you doing it take the time to write down what those are even if you've already started the process of entering an event, ask yourself, am I, am I really maximizing my full potential or am I going at this, to your example, am I going into this at 40% of my potential? Because if there's more there and you can go into it at 60, 70, 80, 80%, you'll double what you've already got. And that then all of a sudden, that is, you know, that, that's exciting. That's, yeah. that's, that's a life-changing experience. So write down, find out what you, it is you want to be doing. That comes back to the goal setting. Or a yep. lot of you that are listening will have goals in place. And then when you look at the goals, ask yourself, are you going into it unleashing your full potential? Are you doing it at, your, at, at the highest potential you possibly could? Tell your story. Tell your story to someone else. Write your, write your story down, journal it, and look at what the limiting factors are. Once you've got limiting factors, look at strategies to overcome them and use them to fuel you because they will, will fuel you well. As you said, Lisa, it doesn't need to be a negative thing. It can be positive and it should be positive because this is about who you are and about becoming the next better version of, your, of yourself. Being, being the better version of yourself. So one of those um, points there you brought up, you know, the word goal setting, um, a better word to use, and this, nothing wrong with goal setting and having goals, but when, when something is really serious and you really want to get there, then you have to make a decision a final decision that this is the way you're going and 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 that leaves no room for doubt that leaves no room for the a bad outcome it almost has to be like you're going in there like this is going to happen come hell or high water i'm going through this and i'm going to make it um, and when you have that that level of commitment and recommitting and going all out into something and making a decision and adopting that identity that's required to get there, then you really, really can achieve absolutely amazing things regardless of the obstacles because the obstacles are, are going to happen anyway. The shit is going to come at you. But if you've got that mental power of saying, oh, this is going to happen, I don't, you know, with with mum in her case, I and you know her book's not far away now from coming out, probably two to three months, hopefully, touch wood. And I had to when because I was going up against massive odds. Nobody had ever done this. Nobody had ever retrained the brain at this late age in adulthood. It was said to be impossible, et cetera, et cetera. And the medical professionals and so on. And I had to go in with a decision. This is going to be the most epic comeback story you've ever heard. And this is. This is going to be amazing and she's coming back and I don't care what you tell me. Now, I could have still failed. I still could have done all of that, but I had to be in a state 
of this is happening. This is going to happen with absolute uncertainty in my heart and in my head, because otherwise it wouldn't have been able to galvanize the resources. When when, when someone takes away your hope, and this is one of the issues that I have with the doctors in, in, in this case, and says to you, there is no hope, there is no chance, this will not happen, that will not happen, what do you think happens to people's action steps that they then take? They are weak because they have been taken away of that hope. And I know they can't give false hope, but not to take away all hope, because Every single person is different and every situation is different. And if you take away people's hope, then you no longer can take massive action towards the positive side of it. Does that make sense? Makes you perfect sense. And I think the, what you've done so well in this process and from talking to you all the way, all the way through the process as well, since, um, since mum had the aneurysm and where she's at now, is you've always had an answer. So what I mean by that is you've identified what are the, likely, the obstacles likely to be. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you're not going to know when they're thrown at you, but you've, you've had the answer. You've known how to overcome it. Some days that's been a lot tougher than others, and you've mm -hmm. had to go and find the answer, but you've been willing to do that. And that's the whole point of this process is when you write it down and you work out right, and you've done this very logically over the, the conversations we've had, it's like, right, here's what the situation is. Here are the limiting factors. Let's put them down on paper. Can I answer this? Yes, this is how I'm going to answer it. Can I answer this? Yes, this is how I'm going to answer it. Can I answer this? And you've continuously and continuously done that. And that is on a huge scale. If we bring that down a few levels and look at it from, a, from a running an ultramarathon, as an example, if you can know what is likely to stop you and the demons that are going to come and tell you you can't go any further, then you've already got the answer because you know what you're going to tell your mind to keep moving forward. You've and your ability to do already prepared yourself and your ability to do that that's why you and mum have been able to do what you do because you have already prepared yourself your yep. your 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 ultra running career and the struggles you've had in your life i think have set you up massively well for this for what you what uh, you've been through what you've been through with mum yep. and what you're going through with mum and it, it's yeah it's strange how things happen in life but you've been given the skill set to deal with this and to get mum to where she is now and give her the quality of life that she's, she's got. But all the time, you, you've, you've always overcome your limit, the limiting beliefs, always worked out what's stopping you, stopping you growing and overcome it, and then allowed yourself and mum to grow with it. And that's yeah, exactly and, the point we want to get across today. Exactly. Yeah, the point. And not to think that there wasn't despair and there wasn't desperation and there wasn't doubts and there wasn't things, but these are thoughts that come and then I let them go again and I stand back up and I get up again. And it's about recommitting every single day to the process. Yeah. So, you know, today we're at the, at the gym and mum was really poor today. Like her performance was poor today. So I'm trying to work out and eliminate what was going on last night, what happened this morning, why is she doing this? And then recommitting and then saying to her, you know, well, you did this fabulously. We made this positive thing because she's feeling down because she can't do this do the same amount of level of exercise that she was doing the day before. And understanding that this is the, 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 the nature of the beast, and it is the nature of humans, actually, that we just can't perform at the drop of a hat all the time, um, and recommitting to the process. We're doing it anyway. We're going to the gym anyway. I don't care if you're not walking very well today. We're going, and we'll work around it. And I did a little bit less on the treadmill and a little bit more on the bike and a little bit different things that you could cope with today. But it's recommitting on a single everyday basis because every single day you have to recommit to that long-term goal, which is 110%. That is the long-term goal. And then, you know, I keep having that she's at an age now, so 77, so you're fighting aging as well. And, you know, people keep saying to me, even my brothers, well, isn't it enough now? Isn't it enough? She's back. She's okay. She can walk. She can do it. Shouldn't you back off? And all the way through, I've had to deal with that coming at me all the time. And no, for me, she's not 100% yet. We're still not walking how I wanted to be walking. She's still not bending as much as I wanted to be able to, you know, like getting her shoes on is still a hell mission, things like that. And until we get those, I'm not backing off. And I probably won't back off then either. But 
it's it's having that commitment to overcome those people that tell you every single day, isn't it enough? Aren't you working hard enough? Aren't you doing this? Isn't it isn't half a marathon long enough? Why do you have to go and do a marathon? You know, all of those sort of negative things that people say to you because they are limiting you because they have a limiting beliefs about what you're capable of or what you should so achieve. True. So true. Of. I was listening, I was coaching a, a lady last week and her daughter went to school and proudly said, mum's going to run a 200 mile race in a few weeks. And the, top, the teacher said, you are lying. No human on earth can run 200 miles. And the little girl went back like, my teacher says you're lying, mummy. And mum said, no, your teacher's got no freaking idea of the reality. Yeah. It, human beings do and can run 200 miles and I am going to be doing a 200 mile race along with quite a few other humans. <laughs> <laughs> but that teacher had put her limiting beliefs onto yeah. the little girl, you know, and told her that that's bullshit, her mum's not doing it and it's all lies. And um, we'll go and prove that teacher wrong. <laughs> there you go, I like it, I like it, I like it. But under yeah, understanding that process, Lisa, is what, it, is what it's all about and I think taking the time to take yourself through that process and it's what's worked well for us over the years is, is pulling apart the layers, pulling the layers off and working out what is really going on underneath. Because once you get to that bit, the, you know, the, the physical side, the physiology is important, but it's, you know, as we've said before, we've seen and worked with many athletes through, through running hot um, that have, have, you know, got ability, but it might not be as good as the ability of someone next to them. Yeah. But what they've done is they've answered all these questions. Mm -hmm. They know what's going to keep them going when the going gets tough. They've, they've worked it out up here wow. yep. and that is taking them that extra step further and further and further because they've been through this process. Yep. So understanding that is understanding that is key and that's some, yeah, they're gold examples you've got there. Yeah, pretty good. All right, everyone. I think we've uh, covered that topic pretty well today. If you've got any comments, if you want to reach out to us, we'd love to hear from you. Um, you can reach out on email, Lisa at runninghotcoaching.com or Neil at runninghotcoaching.com. You can also find us on Instagram. I'm at Lisa Tamaji um, and on Facebook, of course. And we'd love you to check out our, all our programs. We have a Mindset Academy. We have uh, our running programs, our online run training. We have epigenetic testing programs, which is really really all about personalized health. We have a whole lot of stuff going on. So if you're ready to take your performance to the next level, whether it's with your mindset, whether it's with your running, whether it's with weight loss, whether it's with nutrition, whatever your goal is, then please reach out to us. We'd love to help you get there. Any final words for today, Neil? No, I think you've, you've summed it up nicely, Lisa. Thank you very much. We'll see you again next week. See you guys.